Most of the time when you're out there taking sweet, sweet pictures, you don't want the entire scene to be in focus. You'd probably rather draw the eyes of your viewer into what you've decided is the most important thing in the frame. But that's not always the case. Product photography, especially when using a macro lens, requires something of a special technique that's only really been made easy fairly recently in the grand scheme of photography in general. It's called focus stacking. My name is Nicholas Johnson and this is the Space Warehouse. This method is also used a lot in landscape photos. Same thing, you want to control more of what's in focus beyond what your lens's native capability is. Let's say it's your intention to sell this drone battery on eBay, but you want to have a really super slick, professional looking photo so that you stand out from everybody else who's selling the same thing. So you pull out your 105 millimeter 2.8 macro lens and you frame it up sort of at an angle so that uh, all the text on the back of the battery is in view. Much to your surprise, only a tiny bit of the text is legible because the depth of field is so narrow, even at something like f8. So sure, you could crank the aperture closed as far as it goes, but even in the f20s, the whole scene's still not in focus all at once. Going beyond that, you're just gonna lose quality of the image. Plus, you have it on good authority that for this lens, f10 is the sweet spot. So, focus stacking. If you have the Nikon D850, you've got a setting in your menus called focus shift, where it can you can set this camera up to take a bunch of photos, and in between each picture, it'll move the focus out towards infinity just a little bit at a time. Then, using Lightroom and Photoshop, bim bam boom, you've got yourself a picture where you have complete control over what's in focus. Here's how you do it. First, make sure the following is true for your camera in its current state. Otherwise, the focus shift menu option will just be grayed out with no further information on how to make it usable. If the lens itself you're using has an autofocus switch, make sure it's on. Make sure your camera is set to autofocus, and if you're using a tripod, turn the stabilization off. Next, make sure your bracketing is set to zero, and set your focus mode to single point. If you do each one of these things, the feature should turn on and become available in the menus. Now, in the photo shoot menu of your D850, down towards the bottom of the last page, go into the focus shift shooting menu. You can set it to take up to 300 pictures. That's a ton of photos. We're going to do 11. Next, you'll choose how far it steps forward the focus between each shot. You might need to experiment with this just a tiny bit because your needs will vary depending on if you're shooting a tiny thing like a battery, a bigger thing like a car, or a massive thing like a ravine you found in Utah while you were on a road trip with your wife and her dad. But for this purpose, we're gonna set it to eight. I have my lens set to F10 and it's on a tripod, so there will be no movement between each of the pictures and press start. Okay, so now you've got 11 photos of the same thing, but each photo has the focus shifted forward a little bit between each one. So first, you can edit the photo to your liking. I'll just do a super quick one. Maybe a little white balance, a little clarity. Fine, it's great, it's lovely. Quick Lightroom tip, you can hit Command C on this and it'll copy all of the settings you just did and then you can select the other 10 photos and you can hit shift command V and it will just, it'll put that edit that you did on the first photo onto all the photos automatically. Next, select all 11 photos, go to the photo menu, edit in and say open as layers in Photoshop. This will automatically open Photoshop with one file that has each of your photos on a separate layer. This might take a little while if you have an older computer. Okay, now you have all 11 photos on different layers in this Photoshop file. You select all of the layers, go to edit, and go down to auto align layers. You can leave this on auto. It's just gonna make sure everything's perfectly lined up. We were on a tripod, so it should be perfectly lined up anyway, but as the glass moves through a lens, it does just ever so slightly like change the perspective of the shot. So it'll, it'll line everything back up and then you can kind of crop around the edge. Okay, now all of your layers should be aligned. Next, you're gonna go back to the edit menu and you're gonna go to auto blend layers Here's where Photoshop will magically just take every focused portion of each picture and make a mask for every single layer so that all of the focus parts are stacked together. Leave it on stacked images, seamless tones and colors, content aware fill, and hit okay. This part will take a really long time if you have an older computer. This is a 2019 16 inch MacBook and I'm gonna guess this takes like two minutes. And voila, there you have it. The whole battery is in focus. This top layer is the merged everything, but you can take these off one at a time and actually see what it was doing, seeing where it's like kind of building the photo up from the top down. Each picture had a little bit more of it that was in focus and it kind of built it down and it selected the portions that were and ignored the portions that weren't. Any one image looked like this. Let's pick one in the middle. Right, so like you have, this is in perfect focus, but just this little, thin line of it is. As you move forward in the images, you can see how the focus plane is moving up through the text. 
and Photoshop was just able to take all of those in-focus planes and combine them together into one picture. If you're satisfied with what it has done, you select all of the layers and right click and just merge layers and there you have it. Totally in-focus shot of this drone battery. And that's how you use focus stacking with the Nikon D850 focus shift feature. If you're using this process for landscape shots, it's the exact same process. Maybe you want to take less pictures with further steps in between them because the trees aren't going to be, you know, a sixteenth of an inch apart. They're going to be many meters apart. I'm Nicholas Johnson. Thank you for watching.